So I'm going to be showing you some more things about derivatives. Remember, we've been looking at calculus, and now it's time to look at more things that we can do with derivatives. Now, uh, just to explain a little few things about this. Um, well, first of all, it's important to be able to do derivatives to derive things. And we've been doing that a lot with the first derivative, which meant we were looking at um, what the derivative could tell us. And it tells us about a graph and if the graph goes up or down, you know, if it's increasing or decreasing. Now, a little aside, actually, this reminds me of um, whenever I taught calculus with my students, I would always plan it. Um, in order to have the calculus section just before the Christmas holidays, or at least just uh, around the Christmas holidays. And the reason is actually, it's really lame. It's just because of a really stupid joke that I could tell the students. Okay, so you ready for this? Well, I guess you're a captive audience, so you have to be. Um, so what I would do, I would tell the students, okay, well, uh, you know, have fun over the holidays. And remember, derive carefully. Ha ha ha. So the students usually thought that was a little bit stupid, but uh, I enjoyed that joke. You could also have some fun with it too and say, you know, don't drink and derive. I guess you shouldn't do calculus under the influence of alcohol, but um, okay, let's get to it. So we're going to be looking at what's called the second derivative. And after that, a little bit about concavity. I'll explain those. So the very first thing to do maybe is just the second derivative. So maybe I'll write that down. So second derivative. Now, the second derivative, we can write a simple definition for it. It's actually really basic, and it actually sounds really stupid. It's basically just take the derivative of the derivative. That sounds really dumb, doesn't it? So just take the derivative of the derivative. So. Maybe I'll show you a little bit of things with um, some notation. I think that maybe will help. So I'll show you something with notation here. So that right there, by the way, that was a definition. That's sort of, that's what we have to do here. So take the derivative of the derivative. That's it. Now, uh, maybe we should do something with notation. So to show you how this works, maybe we'll write things like, um, yeah, only the original. And maybe after that I do the derivative. So that would be like this. And then if it's okay with you, I hope it is, I'm gonna write second, like 2nd, like the second derivative. And I'm gonna do a little table and show you what kind of notation you might see. Again, I think this helps just because we have three main ways of writing these things. So if we write an equation y equals blah, 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 like you've seen before, we can write the derivative as y primed. We might write it like that with a little like this. That tells you about the slope or the gradient of the graph. Well, it turns out if we want to write the second derivative, we just go y prime primed. Well, that's okay. Uh, what if we have it like this, y? But instead of, you know, y equals da 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 like that, uh, then maybe we write the derivative as this, dy dx. Remember, this notation, although it may seem really silly right now, it's actually by far, I think, the most useful notation because this works for multivariable calculus. And that means that if you have, the, you know, this notation, what it means is find an equation for y and take the x derivative because your equation of y might be defined as with x's and z's and q's and p's, all sorts of different letters. This tells you to take the x derivative of the equation y. What it literally means is how y changes with x. Well, if you want to do the second derivative, we also have a notation for it. We have a d, uh, but this time we go like this. It's a little bit weird. We write d squared y over dx squared. It's a little bit strange how they have the the squared go after the d, whereas here, the squared goes after the x. But this also means just second derivative. So in case you see that, that's usually what you're being asked to do. Now, of course, instead of regular sort of equation notation, maybe this is a function. So maybe it's written like f of x. Well, then the derivative is f primed of x. And that means the second derivative, hopefully it's not too brain busting here, you can figure it out, it's f prime primed of x. So these are the three different ways that we might see a second derivative written. So before going over what it actually does for us, let's just go through and do the mechanics of it because it's actually pretty straightforward here. So let's say we have an example here. 
The example is y equals 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus x plus 2. And maybe our goal is to take the second derivative. So for whatever reason, we want to find the second derivative. Well, if we go back here, the second derivative is just the derivative of the derivative. That sounds really silly. So what we have to do first then is, well, we'd better find the first derivative. So maybe we'll find y primed first. And remember your rules of derivatives here. If we want 3x cubed, we can deal with this one by itself first. And that means a 3 will come in front. So 3 times 3 is going to be 9 times x to the power of, and we have to go 3 minus 1, so that gives me a 2. Great. Then I do the next one. So plus the 2 comes in front. 2 times 4 is 8 times x to the power of, and 2 minus 1 is just 1. So it's I don't have to write the 1. I can just leave it. Minus, now this is an x to the 1 here, so the 1 comes in front, there it is, and it would have to be x to the power of 1 minus 1, but 1 minus 1 is 0, x to the power of 0 is just 1, that's why it just stays like this, and the derivative of a constant goes poof, disappears, so this is my first derivative, but I'm not done, I wanted the second derivative, so all I have to do then I mean, in principle, this is really easy. In practice, sometimes it's more difficult. Just because if your first derivative looks really ugly, then you have to do the derivative of that thing. And sometimes it just gets extra ugly. But in this case, it's not so bad. Actually, here it gets a little bit nicer. So I just assume this is my first equation, and I just take the derivative of that. So 9x squared, well, the derivative of that becomes, let's see, 2 in front of the 9. 2 times 9 is 18 times x to the power of will just be to the power of 1. Plus, now this is a little 1 here, 1 in front of the 8 makes it just 8. And then I do x to the power of 0, which is just 1. So it's just this. This is my second derivative. Of course, I could do all sorts of things. I could factor it, and I can do lots of things with it. But my goal was just to show you how you go about taking a second derivative. Like I said, in principle, it's very simple and very easy. Just take the derivative of the derivative. So you just do it kind of twice. But now, why in the world would we do this? Okay, why? I mean, what does the second derivative actually tell us? I mean, that might be a question there. So it actually tells us about concavity. Now, what do I mean by concavity? Um, that could be something like that. Maybe I'll just show you this. Uh, well. Let's see, I have an equation maybe that goes like this. Maybe it goes like, like this. Now, we can do lots of things with this equation. We can find the maximums and minimums and how the slope is. But it turns out what second derivative tells you is concavity. It tells you if it opens up or down. What I mean by that is, let's take a look at this uh, this little piece of the graph. So from here to here, maybe I'll do that in a different color. So from this point to this point, let's look at this graph here. Now imagine you're actually on a roller coaster. So I mean, if you're you know on a roller coaster or something like that, I mean you'd be going sort of up and over a hill here, and then down here you'd be going sort of down, then up, and then down again. Now what I like to do, I mean a roller coaster I think really helps to understand if you're going up or down. In other words, if the first derivative is positive or negative. But for concavity, I just want to show you this piece right here. So this section right here, that actually opens downwards. So this is an example of something that opens downwards. And the way I think of it is imagine it's a cup or something and you put something in it. You know what I mean? If you had a, if I had a little cup of, I don't know, water and I had some water in it. Well, obviously, if it's concave up, the water will stay in it. If it's concave down, you know, the water would, you know, fall. That's just maybe a way to think about it. But what it really tells you is, yeah, if it opens up or down. Some people like to say, well, it's if it's, you know, a smiley face or a sad face. Oh, well, that's another way to look at it. But in this case, this is concave down. But this graph also has a section that's concave up. I mean, look at this section right here. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. Maybe I'll do it in red. So from here to here, look at this one. This opens upwards. In other words, yeah, you know, I could pour some water in here or a little marble or something. It would, you know, float back and forth or it would, you know, oscillate. That's because it's concave up. You could you could sort of have a cup this way and you could store something in it. So this one is concave up. In other words, it opens upwards. If it's concave down, it means it opens downwards. So this is what we mean by how it opens. So maybe we can actually formalize it a little bit. So what we can actually say is this. 
f prime primed of x, remember that means second derivative, it turns out if your second derivative is positive, then it is concave, whoops, I need to learn how to spell, then it is concave up if it's positive. Okay, so if your derivative, your second derivative, sorry, is positive in some certain region, you know, so if there are some x values where this thing is positive, that means it's concave up, that means it looks something like this. I mean, it's curving upwards. Now, conversely, if f prime prime of x is less than zero, in other words, second derivative is negative, then we say it's concave down. So if this is a happy face, you know, you can imagine almost like a little happy face here, although I'll just erase those. Um, if that's the case, then this one here is sad, it's concave down. So this, I think, is the important thing right here. So you can take a look at a second derivative and see where are the places where it's positive, then it's like this. Where are the places where your second derivative is negative, then it's like this. Now what I want to also remind you, so maybe this is just sort of a blast from the past, but let's just uh, maybe look at this. Remember, so in other words, you know, don't forget about the uh, first derivative. So maybe I'll just write that down. So remember the first derivative. So what I mean by here is this. So if f prime of x, so this is just the first derivative, if that's greater than zero, that tells you that the function is increasing. You know, that means it has a positive slope. In other words, you know, that's like something like this right here, you know, with a, let's say a graph like that. So this is x and this is y. You know, this is something where, you know, every value of x you go over, you have to go up in y. This is an example of an increasing function. I mean, it could still be curving. It could be doing all sorts of weird things. But it's, it's like, you know, if you're walking from left to right, you'd be going up a hill. That's because your derivative is positive. That's because you're increasing. You could say this is an increasing function. And conversely, if f prime of x is less than zero, then we say it's a decreasing function. So that means it's something, I mean, it could be a curve too. Maybe it's like this, whoa, like that. That means, you know, for every unit you go to the right, you actually have to go down. Or well, the way I think of it is, let's say you're traveling from left to right, you're going down a hill, so you're decreasing. If you're going from left to right and going up, then you're going up a hill. So this kind of tells us a little bit about how the first and second derivative can tell us some useful things. Right? The first derivative tells you if your function is increasing or decreasing, and the second derivative tells you more about it. It tells you about the concavity. Because look at just the way I've drawn it like this, like even this weird curvy one right here. Although the, sec the first derivative is negative everywhere, in other words, it's decreasing everywhere, here it's always a negative slope. You know, as you go to the right, you're always going down. But um, the second derivative, look at this. It's actually, here it's concave up. It's sort of, you know, opening upwards. This little section right here, it's opening downwards. Over here, it's opening upwards again. So although I've drawn it just like this and the function is decreasing everywhere, it turns out the concavity is changing lots. It's going from, you know, second derivative is positive to negative to positive to negative again. So the second derivative tells you sort of more details from like what the first derivative tells you. Now you might ask, why stop there? Can we take the third derivative? I remember I used to think about that when I saw these commercials for razors. You know, they said, oh, we have one blade. Now we have two. Now we have three. Well, we have four. Well, with derivatives, you can pretty much stop at the second derivative because it's, it's at least the first and second derivatives tell us useful things. Of course, you could take a third and fourth and fifth derivative if you feel like it. Uh, or maybe it just disappears, maybe it doesn't exist, but you could certainly try, but it's not very useful for us. So the most common things you're gonna be doing and seeing is first derivative and second derivative.